New York Times report last month found that several cheerleaders alleged they were ordered to act as dates for sponsors and suite holders during a calendar photo shoot and that they were told to pose topless in front of those guests, even though there was no nudity in the calendar. It's devastating. These women have been texting me for the last 36 hours wondering if their nude bodies or photographs are circulating through the inboxes of the NFL. It's just indicative of the toxic culture that existed within the Washington football team and around the league. And it's not just cheerleaders. There is breaking news just coming in about Washington's NFL team. 15 former female employees are speaking to the Washington Post, detailing allegations of sexual harassment over a span of 13 years. Emily Applegate, who worked in the marketing department, she said, quote, it was the most miserable experience of my life. These people are not going to believe or care about some young woman that's making $32,000 a year when they have somebody that's the CMO of a company that they have to protect. And there's really no way to separate the attitude towards women that's on display here from the league's handling of domestic violence. It is a culture that clearly puts up with domestic violence. The NFL has been forced to act in recent years only when there is immense public pressure and it becomes impossible to deny and ignore as in the case of Baltimore Ravens running back Ray Rice. Disturbing new video tonight of an NFL football player knocking out his fiance. The fact is, if that video doesn't go public, Roger Goodell would have done what he has always done before, hide it behind the shield. ESPN reporting the Ravens knew exactly what was on that brutal elevator tape for months, but they still pressed top NFL officials to go easy on their star player. It's just funny, like, what, the, what the league will tolerate and what they won't tolerate. Pro football fans were seeing pink yesterday. It's for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Meanwhile, the NFL has spent more time, energy, and money targeting women with PR campaigns to keep them watching, rather than appealing to men to stop the abuse. So here's a question. What does all of this mean for the future? What does it mean for female fans whose dollars are so coveted by the NFL, who make up an estimated 45% of the NFL's fan base. Will the NFL, in all its power, take the lead on the issue of domestic violence? The point here isn't that the NFL is any worse than any other traditionally male cultural institution in America when it comes to things like domestic violence or sexual assault or bullying or homophobia. This is more about how this league, rather than using its cultural influence to lead has failed time and again to take responsibility for their own role in perpetuating a culture of violent masculinity.